Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the latest resin printer from Elegoo, the Saturn IV Ultra 16K. The overall design is similar to last year's Saturn IV Ultra, but obviously the resolution has been bumped up to 16K instead of 12K, and it also introduces some new features. So let's take a look at what this $500 machine offers. The build volume is 211 by 118 by 220 millimeters and the platform is a laser engraved aluminum plate. The 16K LCD screen is 10 inches and the motion system uses dual linear rails. It features auto leveling, eliminating the need for manual adjustments that require loosening the platform and applying pressure with a piece of paper, as seen in older machines. It utilizes a tilt release system, which moves the resin tray at an angle to release prints more effectively compared to lifting the entire platform straight up. This helps prevent the most common issue in resin printing, prints getting stuck to the film of the resin tray instead of the platform leading to failed prints. It includes a built-in heater that can warm the resin to around 30 degrees Celsius, which is especially useful in colder environments like my garage, which drops to 13 to 15 degrees Celsius at night. Heating the resin to 30 degrees Celsius enhances layer adhesion and reduces warping. It also features a camera with an LED light and AI capabilities, including failed print detection, print monitoring, and time-lapse recording. With built-in Wi-Fi, it supports sending prints over a local network from the slicer. For those who prefer offline printing, a USB drive is included. Additional features include power loss recovery, the temperature of the LED light source is also monitored, and if it exceeds 80 degrees Celsius, the print will pause to prevent permanent damage to the LED. Another useful feature is resin level detection, which prevents the print from starting if the resin level is too low or too high. It seems this machine is packed with features. I'd like to thank Elegoo for sending us this machine to review and for sponsoring today's video. Even though this is a sponsored review, we won't hesitate to point out any cons. With that said, let's get started. Besides the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, Elegoo also sent me their new Mercury Plus V3 washing and curing station, which we will use later. The printer is protected by custom laser cut foam and airbags, and the whole machine is placed inside a plastic bag. After taking out all the accessories and tools, we have a drip tray, power supply, spatula, gloves, masks, filters, and some general tools. The bottle of resin you see here is not included. It's a rapid resin, and I will be using it along with other resins in this video. On the side of the machine, we have a USB port, power switch, and power inlet. Compared to the older Saturn IV Ultra, the Wi-Fi antenna is now built in. If you prefer to print completely offline, you can copy the file from your slicer to a USB drive. Since there is nothing to install, we can just turn on the machine. First, Select the language, then connect to your Wi-Fi network. The machine supports both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Give the printer a name and let it start a self-test. After a minute, it detects that a new firmware update is available, so we will update it before running any tests. As this machine has auto-leveling and is supposed to print right out of the box, I will just pour in some resin. Since there is a heater to warm the resin, the resin tray has a minimum required level, I will just pour it to the maximum level, which uses up 80% of a one kilogram bottle. I will start a test print from the USB drive. The Elegoo Rook is like my 3D Benchy of resin printing, so I'll start with this simple model to make sure everything is working. It begins by heating the resin, which is useful in my cold garage. It's around 8 p.m., and the temperature can drop to 12 to 13 degrees Celsius if I run overnight prints. If you look at the tray, it actually releases the print at a tilted angle, which helps prevent the print from sticking to the bottom film instead of the build plate. The print finishes in 2 hours and 22 minutes. It looks fine and is well adhered to the build plate. Now, I will use the Mercury Plus V3 washing and curing station for post-processing. First, I pour 1 gallon of 99% IPA into the tank and set the washing time to 5 minutes. After that, I cure it under UV light for another 5 minutes. 
the rook print turned out nicely, the surface is smooth, and the tiny text on top is also clear. Overall, it's a very nice print from top to bottom. Next, I will install the software and slice my own model. Elegoo just launched a new free slicer, so I'll try downloading it. It currently only has a Windows version. After installing it, I add the printer profile to the slicer. The latest Saturn IV Ultra 16K profile is included, and for resin, I add a standard resin profile. I try to find the printer over the network, but this feature is not yet available, as I don't like copying the file to a USB drive and walking back and forth between the printer and my computer. In that case, I will just switch back to Cheetubox Pro. Cheetubox has both a free and a pro version, both support network printing. The Saturn IV Ultra 16K profile is also available in Cheetubox, so I leave all parameters at default. I then check the network manager. Since I already have my older Saturn IV Ultra setup, I add the 16K version, which is automatically detected. While recording this screen, I was printing the Rook, so I check the camera feed. The camera resolution seems fine. There's an LED light next to it, so even if the printer is closed and I haven't turned on my bench lights, I can still see what's happening. After finishing the Rook test print, I import a Goku model into the slicer. I don't want to manually adjust anything, so I let the slicer handle everything automatically. However, I still need to resize it myself. Since the printer's maximum Z height is 220 millimeters, I set it to 210 millimeters to allow room for supports, which will raise the model by a few millimeters. The layer previews look fine, so I just upload the file to the printer. The machine supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi, so uploading this 220 megabyte file is still pretty fast. It takes exactly one minute. I start the print and turn on the time-lapse feature. The process begins the same way, with the printer heating the resin. Checking the network manager, I can see the progress. The estimated print time is about 12 hours, so I leave it to run overnight. The print finishes in 9 hours and 25 minutes. It looks like a successful print, as it adhered well to the platform, requiring some effort to remove with a spatula. The washing tank is large enough to fit the full 210mm model, so I don't need to open another gallon of IPA, which is great. After washing, I remove the supports and cure the model for 5 minutes. Aside from the support marks, the model printed well. I really want to try airbrushing in the future, but for now, I will apply some primer and possibly sand it down later when I have time. Since this is a 16K resolution printer, I will print a lizard model I've previously printed on other machines and compare the results. The biggest challenge is removing the supports without breaking the model. The print finishes in 2 hours and 35 minutes. I wash the model, carefully remove the supports, and cure it for 5 minutes. The detail on this print is stunning. It looks incredibly realistic. Comparing it with the same model printed on 8K, 12K, and 16K printers, the higher the resolution, the crisper the details. The 12K and 16K prints look very similar. In fact, I prefer the resin color from the 12K print. Then, I will try printing multiple objects at once. I select some buildings and the Statue of Liberty, printing all four models on the same plate. Since I set them all to 150 millimeters, the print time remains the same regardless of the quantity. The print takes 5 hours and 35 minutes. After washing several prints, the IPA becomes slightly cloudy, but I usually don't replace it until after 8 to 10 prints. I place a AA battery next to the prints for scale. These models are small, and the fine details on these tiny objects are something you wouldn't expect from FDM printing. 
Finally, I print some functional parts, a viewfinder enclosure, and a winding knob for an old camera. The viewfinder enclosure could be printed on an FDM printer with any filament and still work fine. However, the winding knob has very thin walls, only about 0.6 millimeters. When using FDM with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, it prints with just one perimeter, making the part weak and unusable. I want to see how it turns out on a resin printer, and I'll also test a new resin from Chitu that claims to be good for engineering models. Since I set the curing time for each layer to 4 seconds, the print takes a bit longer, finishing in about 2 hours. After washing and curing, I compare the results. The viewfinder enclosure prints well on both resin and FDM, but the resin print has a much smoother surface with no visible layer lines or vibrations, almost like an injection molded part. For the winding knob, the difference is significant. The PLA print is completely useless, while the polycarbonate carbon fiber print is better, but likely to break due to its single wall structure. The resin print, on the other hand, closely matches the actual thickness of the digital model. From a certain angle, the difference is even more obvious. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The 16K resolution is the highest resolution available in the market, even though you won't see much difference with naked eyes, but when buying a new machine, you always want to get the highest resolution, as the price difference is just around $100 compared to 12K, and you also get some extra features. 2. The resin heater is probably the best feature on this machine. It can heat up the resin temperature to around 30 degrees Celsius, which is particularly beneficial in colder environments, like my garage, where temperatures drop to 13 to 15 degrees Celsius at night. Maintaining the resin at 30 degrees Celsius improves viscosity, strengthens layer adhesion, and minimizes warping. It seems to be working pretty well so far in all my test prints. 3. The tilt-release resin tray makes a lot of sense, compared to simply moving the platform straight up to release the print from the tray's film, releasing at an angle allows the print to adhere better to the platform rather than the resin tray, increasing the print success rate. This also extends the life of the tray's film by reducing the force and stress applied during the peeling process. 4. The auto-leveling works very well. I didn't need to do any manual calibration and was able to start printing right out of the box with successful prints one after another. Combined with the tilt release and resin heating, these features make resin printing significantly easier and more reliable. 5. The LED light is a small addition, but it makes a noticeable difference. During resin printing, the printer's lid remains closed, making it difficult to see inside or capture footage from the outside. Opening the lid to check on a print causes odors to spread throughout the room. The built-in LED helps with remote monitoring and enables clear time-lapse recording. 6. The resin level detection functioned well. When there wasn't enough resin in the tray, it triggered an error and prevented the print from starting. The same happens when I try to pour a bit over the maximum line. It also refuses to start. This is especially useful as excess resin would spill over the top, creating a huge mess. Now for the cons. 1. The Elagusa Telite Slicer feels incomplete at this stage. Currently, it's only available for Windows, and the network feature is missing, which discourages me from even trying it, especially since I already have Chitu Box Pro, which, while costing $169 per year, offers a lot of advanced features. That said, even the free version of Chitu Box works quite well and also supports network printing, making it a more practical choice for now. Two. The resin level detection functioned well, but it also raised an issue. Since the machine has to start a print when the resin level is between the min and max line, so if you have less than half a bottle of resin, you can't start a print unless you pour more from another bottle to reach the minimum level. 3. The residue detection feature didn't work too well. I left a small piece of resin at the bottom and started a print, but since the residue was small, it didn't trigger a leveling failure and the print still started. However, I would expect even a small piece of residue just a few millimeters in height to trigger a leveling failure, as it is still going to make the surface uneven. I hope future firmware updates can address this issue. 4. The 4-inch touchscreen is a bit small, though it's generally not an issue. 
The only time I really found it too small was when using the on-screen keyboard to enter my Wi-Fi password. Since the screen is in portrait orientation, the keyboard becomes even more compact, making it difficult to type accurately. The touchscreen UI is overall well-designed, but some pop-up screens lack proper formatting. For example, when a print finishes, the text is difficult to read. In conclusion, the Saturn IV Ultra 16K is definitely an improvement over the previous Saturn IV Ultra 12K. For just $100 more, you get higher resolution, the same core features, plus a resin heater and other small refinements. The old Saturn IV Ultra was already on my recommendation list on auroratechchannel.com, but this new model will replace it, becoming the only resin printer on the list. As you may have noticed from my channel, I primarily focus on FDM printing and we love FDM. However, if you're looking to get started with resin printing, I'd highly recommend the Saturn IV Ultra 16K. I'd also suggest considering the Mercury Plus V3 washing and curing station, as this complete resin printing solution will make your resin printing experience much smoother. Of course, there are still some minor issues, which I mentioned in the con section, but I don't see them as deal breakers. So if you're interested in the Saturn IV Ultra 16K, I included its link in the description. Don't forget to also visit my website, auroratechchannel.com, for the latest recommendations on 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines. My price tracker scans popular brand websites and updates prices hourly to help you find great deals. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.